So we did a 2K build about five months ago. And like our 1K build, did we update it or did we need to update it? We'll find out now on this Robitech. So I like to keep everything up to date as we go throughout the year. So when we think about it, you know, when we did this 2K build about five months ago, we've had like the release of XT, we've got B550 out now, and all in all, like prices for Ryzen and even in some, really, in some senses, Intel, which has now got its 10th gen CPU, like all of that stuff has changed. It feels important for us to continue to update you guys on a pretty consistent basis to make sure that you guys know what's what when it comes to building 1K, 2K, 500, 750, $3,000, $5,000 builds. I just think people are always looking to have new builds, specifically around these like these millennial milestones like 1K, 2K. And I always feel like it's, I don't know, it's our duty to keep you guys updated in terms of what the best 1K, 2K build is. So in this episode, we're gonna talk about specifically an update to the 2K build now that we're coming into mid 2020. In fact, have even crossed past. For many of us, we would, we would, we would probably say that 2020 can't end soon enough. From a tech standpoint, if you're looking for a new PC, you're like, I'm excited, Roby. Let's talk about uh, what are the parts that I should put inside of this PC. Now, before I get into the new parts, let's recap what I had in the old version of this when I did the build about five months ago. On the CPU, we started with the uh, Ryzen 7 3700X, which is still an absolutely great CPU. And on the, here, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, a, take a moment here for a second and just say, honestly, the build that I have, that I, that I did this for, is still a really great build. And, and I can tell you some of the pros and cons of the 2K build that I did back then, and the 2K build that I'm gonna announce a little bit later on uh, in the video. And if you wanna check out that original 2K build video, you can just check that out right here. And, and the big difference is, is that one of the things I was always promising, I was like, hey, Roby, you're gonna do a 2K and we're gonna show a step-by-step. -step. For this one, I promise, we're actually gonna do a step-by-step. -step. We've got it on the uh, we've got it on the schedule, right, Casey? We got it on the schedule. Yep, she knows it's gonna happen. So therefore, you guys know, for real, unlike the last one, we never did it outside of a live stream, we will build this one and, and actually bench, start, bench test it. Like I said, CPU is a Ryzen 7 3700X. We use the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Elite, which is probably one of my favorite motherboards. We stuck it in the H510 case, and I'll tell you a little bit why we did the H510 and why we chose a different case for this the, the new version versus the one we did it in. We use the Kraken X62 280 millimeter AIO, which is why we chose the H510. 16 gigs of G-Skill Triton Z for AMD Ryzen in 3600 megahertz. We did a 500 gig Crucial P1. We also did a one terabyte Crucial NVMe drive. We did an 850 watt Corsair Series 850 PSU. We did a gigabyte GeForce RTX 2080 Super. And then we threw in some Asia Horse cables, which for the most part, I it, no matter what, anytime I'm gonna do a build, I'll always throw in Asia Horse cables just because I want the build to look same magnifique. But again, these are completely optional. When you think about that build, and you're probably you're probably listening to this afterwards, and you're like, actually, Ruby, that's a pretty dang good build. And I would I would agree. If you were to still build that build in mid-2020, I would say you actually have a really good PC. But when I thought about it, like as prices have come down, there's been some options. And, and one of the things that I'll uh, say when, when I talk about the first PC, the first part that we're gonna upgrade is honestly, when I was trying to get the, the prices around, the option of like a 3900X, given what the price point was, was actually like it was outside of the range of trying to do a good 2K build. In this version, it actually isn't. And the other thing too is given how kind of useless the 3800X was, trying to spend the money on a 3800X just didn't make a lot of sense, which is why we were able to do an AIO and do some overclocking to the 3700X. Let's talk about the parts in my new $2,000, best of $2,000, and this is a streaming and gaming PC, which is, I wanna caveat real quick, which is why I don't recommend AMD graphics card is because of the NVEC encoding that actually comes with uh, NVIDIA GPU. So it's really hard for me when I do streaming streaming and gaming. If I can make a PC more multi-purpose, I just feel like that's a better option for the person who's spending money. Given all of that, when you put it all together, here are the parts for what I consider the best new mid-2020 build you can do for $2,000. Now, starting at the very top, I chose the AMD Ryzen 9 3900X 12 core, 24 thread, 3.8 gigahertz CPU. Again, still couldn't do Intel because giving an Intel equivalent for the price at $429.99 at the time of recording just didn't make a whole lot of sense. And the fact that when I was doing the 2K build five months ago or so in, in early January or February, that just, again, that with this, this price, it was greater than 500 bucks in most cases. So to get this CPU and keep it in the 2K price 
is why I basically was like, okay, this is where I'm gonna start. So already we're looking at a significant upgrade in the overall CPU power. Let's talk about GPU because GPU is gonna be very similar to what we had in the last one. And that's an EVGA GeForce RTX 2080 Super. So 2080 Super, uh, same as what I had before. Again, choosing EVGA, they do a really good job of choosing really good dyes. Not a lot of overclockability because they, they have they're, they're already kind of pushed kind of hard. It's their ultra gaming, which is a which is a very, very good GPU. The other thing too is like, again, 2080 Super, you can't, you can't really beat that because you know if you're going above a 2080 Ti, you're looking at double that amount of value and that's just not gonna fit in a $2,000 build. For RAM, and this is where you'll actually see me do a jump. Instead of doing 16 gigs, I actually went with 32 gigs, uh, given that this is actually streaming to there. We're just getting more memory capabilities. And so we're using the G-Scale Triton Z Neo, for AMD at 32 gigs at 3,600. So instead of 16, we've actually gone to 32. Now, if you did want to say, say for instance, you're like, hey, you're putting in a 3,900X. One of the things I will say is I'm actually stock air cooling this. So I'm using the uh, the Wraith Prism that's actually included in this. And all of my stuff is about air cooling. But if you wanted to drop the 16 gigs and add an AIO, which you could potentially do, you'd be around the $100, be a little bit more expensive, but you could, this is totally a place where you could actually sacrifice that to get in an AIO and potentially overclock that 3,900X. For motherboard, I did the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Pro. So didn't do X570. Again, I was trying to make sure that I'm maximizing and getting the most I can um, and trying to make sure I kept that 3900X with the 2080 Super. I mean, you're talking about a power horse, both from a gaming, streaming, video editing. It's just, it makes a very, very versatile rig. So doing B550 is again, you still get the option if you wanted to do PCIe Gen 4 on that single M.2, you've still got by 16, one by 16 slot for PCIe. That's also at PCIe Gen 4. But the other thing too is like for 189 bucks, you're getting Wi-Fi built in. You also are getting a quality motherboard. Again, sticking with Gigabyte. You got plenty of overclocking capability if you wanted to do that because you got a good, you got a good VRM. And at the same time, I'm not paying X570 prices, which means I get to keep that 3900X and that 2080 Super. For case, something I'm pretty excited about is we're actually using a new case, and this is the Fantex Eclipse P500A which is built on the same platform as the P600S. It has all of the airflow awesomeness that includes in the P400A. It's still only a hundred bucks. So it's got, it's newer. It's an upgraded version of the P400A and uh, very easy to build in chassis, lots of cable management. It's an absolutely dream to build in and 99 bucks, you really can't beat it. It looks really good. And at the same time, you're, you're just, you're getting a quality case and experience for just such a low dollar amount. For storage, very similar to what I had before, but we actually went from 1.5 terabytes to two terabytes. So we've got two crucial P11 terabyte uh, NVMe storage. So instead of going 1.5, we actually got to two, which means you get more room for games, more rooms for streaming. So you've got some editing op capabilities there if you wanted to. Two terabytes, you're feeling pretty good in terms of your overall storage. Now, the one thing that I did downgrade and a lot of this has to do is like going to be 550. I'm not as necessarily worried about overclocking or anything like this. I went to 750 watts. 750 watts, even when you think about us moving to 3080 or 3090 GPUs, 750 watts is still going to be more than enough power to basically power any one of those GPUs should you decide to upgrade. I didn't want to jump to 850. And I want to save a little bit of money. That's taking us to a total of $2,017.92. We saw what is essentially jump from a 3700X to a 3900X. Yes, we dropped the cooling down if we wanted to, but again, you have some options there to actually save that. And I'll talk a little bit about that later on. We've actually got more storage, better airflow case overall, but we lost liquid cooling. And at the same time, we uh, we actually gained another 16 gigs of RAM. Now, if you want to say, hey, let's, if, if I want to do a second configuration, if I wanted to, to change it up a little bit, what you could do is go to 1.5 terabytes of storage, go from 32 gigs down to 16 gigs, and actually add your AIO, which would be very close to the very same price. And again, you could do an H100i or even an X62 or X63 from NZXT, which would give you that cooling and give you that overclocking potential if you wanted to. And I'll put links for all of that stuff down in the description below so you can totally check it out and make that alternative configuration. And I've got both Newegg and Amazon links, making it easy for you to find the parts. That's it, guys. That's an updated 2020, best of 2020, $2,000 bill. And I've got some links. I believe I'm going to show them right here. I've got some links right here so you can go and check how a build with a 3900X and a 2080 Super. We've done some bench testing on our live show, so you can check those out. All in all, this is a great build for 1440p, uh, totally at high frame rates. You've got some 4K potential there for sure. So you've got some great options in terms of what this build can do for both gaming and stream. I'd love to know down in the comments below, what would you change in this build? And I know for all those people, before you go to AMD, there's gonna be a ton of people who are gonna say, well, you could do this and this and this. Remember, I didn't do AMD specifically because I also include streaming in terms of my overall stuff. But I'd love to know down in the comments below, what did you think of this build? 
What would you change? What would you keep the same? And if you build this build, what are the kind of games that you'd like us to see when we actually do the build that you'd like us to test when we actually do the benchmarking later on uh, in the month? Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we go live. Also, make sure you check out our live show over here, right here on YouTube, every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, starting at 6.30 p.m. And you can also check us out on Twitch because we're also streaming there. We stream to actually both platforms. Now, you can also come and hang out with us over on Discord. We've got a ton of like-minded tech people over, you know, literally thousands. We'd love to help you answer questions about tech builds. Uh, if you wanna talk about just PC builds, show off your PC builds, or even just talk about gaming, come check, it, come check us out and hang out with us over there on Discord. Or you can follow me on all the socials because you know we're hip, we are on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, all at Roby Tech, and I'm even hanging out with the kids over on TikTok, uh, if that's still a thing by the time you watch this video. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy our content. We try to upload new videos every Monday and Tuesday, and sometimes on Fridays every week. Anyway, that's it for me. I'm gonna go hashtag BBCores and um, potentially build some more PCs. We'll see you guys later.